This is so sick. Yeah. So this just records it. Okay. And then we got the headphone splitter and two mics. I like it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. How much did this cost? I don't want to say. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't skimp. Lot. That's about all I'll say. All right. I mean, yeah. it's worth it, though. Jonah was trying to guess it yesterday, and I, I, he was like, he gave me such a low ball number, and I was really? like, no, like, not, what, not like five hundred bucks? <laughs> Is that low ball? <laughs> I, I don't want to say. Oh my god, like two thousand? <laughs> no, no, okay. no, no, no. Okay. I, I could do that if I got a couple other gadgets. This is like bare yeah. bones. What other gadgets would you get? Well, I it? definitely want to add like a video portion to it. Oh, that'd be cool. I would cool. love to have. Yeah, that would be cool. The cheapest Dude. way I would go would just set up my phone on a tripod. Yeah. With a probably um, like a battery pack to it mm. as well because it'll well, probably die. <laughs> um, yeah. But I'm going to adjust Well, what type of phone do you have? Pixel 2. Oh, well, I have no idea how that camera is. It's It was good for its time, okay. but... I feel like that would work. And then once you get, like, big enough, mm -hmm. you could have, like, a couch set up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, well, what's cool. cool with this is it's mobile, too. You know, yeah. like, we're doing it outside right now. You could go on a hike. You could go on a hike. You. Like, Jonah wants to do a bunch of 14ers. <gasps> yes! And so I was like, we could pack this up and yes. record on top of a 14. Oh, like, so we can sick. take this anywhere. That's so sick. Yeah. Man. That's my goal next summer. I want to do a 14 or a week. You can come along. Well, I'm gone this summer. Oh, what? Oh, you're going back home? I'm going back home. So are you going to do a... Does Utah have 14 or No, no, like next summer. Next summer might oh. be... Oh. Yeah. Because we're in the summer, is that? Yeah. What you're thinking? Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're in well, the summer. Well, you should just come back up. <laughs> For a weekend? Yeah. <laughs> that come is actually totally possible. Hang. He wants to do, like, some of the ones he's planning is, like, a four-day thing where you'd knock out, like, at least three. That's cool. On some of the ones he was talking about. And then just, like, backpack? I guess. Or well, some of them, like, if you go straight from summit to summit, it's mm -hmm. just, like, a couple of hours, depending on oh. which one you choose. He knows more about it than I do, so he'd okay. be a good one to ask. Yeah, that's cool. But. Dang. I just applied for a job, this summer job. Hiking dogs. Oh. He paid for hiking yeah, dogs. Yeah, that's awesome. So maybe I'll get fit by that, and then I'll come <laughs> back and try a 14er. Um, yeah, that was nice working in addictions therapy because we were hiking and doing group therapy. Mm. And so it, it wasn't hiking dogs. It was hi hiking addicts. But um, wow. that was – I really enjoyed that. That's cool. It was a really fun time in my life. That was really cool. Because you would be out – some trips we did like eight hours hiking wow. and like do some wow. group therapy. We brought our counselor along and he would work with them individual stuff while we're walking, you know, like just a really cool setup. Dang. That's super cool. Yeah. I almost did that. There was a therapist back home in Utah mm -hmm. who hikes with their patients. Okay. And then every single time they like go on a different hike and mm -hmm. like talk through stuff, but it's like super expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why she costs that much. Oh, like you almost, uh, like almost was a client. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was almost, I, was I thought you were gonna work for him, oh, which would no. be the, the move. I think it, yeah, because you get paid and you do yeah. it. You know, but I feel like you have to have some sort of education. Yeah, I could yeah. be like a high school student and be like <laughs> a therapist. Unless people. you're like, oh. I'll work for you for free. That stuff is always fun. True. And then a month later, they're like, "All right, I'll hire you because yeah. I taught you all this stuff." That could be really just oh, that'd be so just cool. by osmosis, you know? Yeah. But. Yeah. Yeah, there's like a couple places here I thought about like just putting some time for to hopefully get in good with them. But I have mm. that's more like I have too many interests where I just need to like yeah. do do something, you know, <laughs> instead of like fantasizing about these different things yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um is that like the soup kitchen? I know you spend time there. Or what what places are you talking about? Well, there like I don't know, sometimes I have ideas of like trying to work to be like I don't want to use the word life coach, but like down that line of just mm. like trying to align somebody's life, like the three way triangle or circle thing that yeah. I was showing you, like being yeah. able to exercise that into somebody's personal life to um, help them fully function in th those three domains. Cool. What was it? Finances, yeah. health and community, you know, yeah. that we all need. But I'm already <laughs> working 40 hours a week and. <laughs> Climbing and in the gym and trying yeah. to meet people and just be social as well and mm -hmm. living it out yourself. Yeah, you're actually to do. doing yeah. things. Yeah, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why I think it's it's 
it's just so great if you can utilize your actual job mm-hmm. in that sort of field. Yeah, yeah. That's so cool. That's why, like, if you were able to game it into an actual job, mm-hmm. that would be nice because then you're actually working and doing the thing that you're doing for free now for paid. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, imagine that <laughs> imagine, imagine that. that that's the goal yeah that is the goal what would it look like for you uh same same thing mm-hmm. the, or i guess my goal has been for a couple of years to help other people create their own businesses yeah that would be the dream that would be the dream job yeah mm-hmm. can you identify anybody that's doing that right now yeah like an actual person i met with him i interviewed him oh mm-hmm. he said i could do a summer internship with them oh which is super cool he's a family friend and i never knew like what he did for a living until someone was like you need to interview someone and like talk about their job Mm -hmm. and for like class yeah okay so i was like hey jeff could i interview (laughs) you and then i was like blown away by what he does it's he travels around the country helping people like make their dreams a reality okay in the business world in a business sense yeah in a business sense okay cool it's so cool did he tell you like any businesses he's helped so so he has kind of like three (laughs) that's so cute i thought it was a dog (laughs) i was like is someone is he dying (laughs) he sounds hurt (laughs) um there's like he does like three things so one of them and this is the way he makes all his all of his money he goes around to different um like companies Mm -hmm. and he helps them save money basically because a lot of companies are really insufficient in their financing and funds so he goes to them and is like look if you do this you could save like two million dollars every year yeah um and then he'll take specifically in the healthcare okay because healthcare is just terrible yeah so he works in the with companies and their healthcare systems Mm -hmm. and then he does he'll they'll pay him to do that Mm-hmm. Um, and then he's like, so with that, like, however much you save, what if you just gave 10% back to the community? Mm. And then he lets them know about all these local really cool things that are happening. And then they put the money into that place. Okay. So that's how he makes his money and also helps others. And then he, with that money, he literally <laughs> just travels around the country with his wife, um, meeting people and connecting them to others. So mm. he calls it like his ecosystem. Okay. So he has this the network. Huge, yeah, yeah, the network. A network. Huge ecosystem of people that he connects others with. So they're like, mm. oh, you want to start this? I've got a friend who trains people in this. Like, I'll totally hook you up yeah. or this or that. And he kind of gives them tangible steps. But the first thing he does, this is so cool. He said that one of his um, skills is dumbing information down mm. to get it to like just like the raw bone of it. Yeah. So, like, he talks to people and gets to know them, finds mm-hmm. out their identity, what they're into, all this stuff. And then he, like, dumbs it all the way down and is like, okay, this is your value proposition. Like, if yeah. you do this, you're going to succeed. And yeah. helps them identify their dream and then gives them tangible steps to do okay. it. So cool. Yeah, I love that. I would yeah. love to do something like that. Right. That was, like, some of the things we were talking about last time. Yeah. We talked about. But he's actually doing it. <laughs> he's actually doing it. <laughs> yeah. Except the only thing with him, like... Is he's he's so all over the place. Like he's here and then he's here and then he's here. You know, mm. which is so cool. But intellectually or physically? No, no, physically. Okay. Like he'll be he's in Utah right now for two months, and mm-hmm. then he'll probably keep traveling, and then he'll go here and here and here, and that works perfectly for him. Mm-hmm. But I would rather walk through the you know, kind of like. Well, don't you think you have to do some of that because you have to maintain almost this ecosystem? Definitely, yeah. But I don't I don't know. I feel like I'd get o- overwhelmed. Maybe not. I-, I feel like sometimes I spread myself way too thin. Mm-hmm. Like you said, in all the different interests and stuff. Yeah. So I feel like if I had that many people and always moving around, I'd spread myself really thin. Mm. When I'd love to just dive into a community mm. and stay yeah. there. That's what I yeah. want to do. And you don't know until you get into it. Sure. But like, he could be compartmentalizing it really well. Where two weeks, I'm in this place, and I'm in it. Mm -hmm. And then after those two weeks, I'm in another place, and I'm in it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So it's like, what if the next two weeks, you just, every single day, just climbed? And then after climbing, you watch climbing videos, and then in the morning, you talk to all the climbing staff, just for two weeks. Mm -hmm. And then the next week, you just, I don't know, focus on eating a balanced diet for you, 
for two weeks. Like, that's basically what he's doing, but just with other people. Yeah. Is how I'd imagine it. Yeah. Which is cool. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> Do you cool. know what I'm saying, though? Yeah. So it's more, it's, it could be more regulated, that's is true. what I'm getting at. For sure. And it's like, um, it's like when you have a homework assignment and you just say, I have 30 minutes on this and then I got to go leave. I got to leave. Mm-hmm. Basically, you budget whatever time you have yeah. for that spot. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And that's probably what he does. That is that is what he does. Mm-hmm. Definitely. But So I think you, you could be good in it is maybe. what I'm getting at. Yeah, I think so. I think I would just get sad to leave that place mm. after, you know, yeah, you'd have developing to those detach. relationships. Yeah, but then you could hard. come back. Yeah. I yeah. guess we'll never know until we try. <laughs> <laughs> Me and Jonah were talking about this yesterday, actually. Really? Well, something it like it reminded me of it similarly because we were talking about like he was talking about it in his like family context because he has like some family issues Mm -hmm. that go back. But then also like just like dealing with loss, I guess. Mm. Like in the last two weeks, I told him um, we've lost eight people of the 80 people in our resident home. So it's 10 percent. My and we working in addictions you lose people as well sometimes to death but more um they break the rules they bring drugs in they mm-hmm. don't like the program and leave stuff like that um mm-hmm. we we're talking about that yesterday and it's dealing with that loss again where like especially like a lot of times it's the ones you don't want to go you know especially if it's 10 mm-hmm. people at least one of them you really liked you know and so dealing with that loss but my take on it is like you're gonna it's more beds open for people that need help Hmm. so if you leave that space and you did your job in the two weeks and if you if you focus that two weeks you should have you know Mm -hmm. then you get to go to a next space and it's not it's different because it's not a new bed that opens up but it's a new space that opens up that you can benefit Hmm. is how i look at it yeah yeah that's a really positive outlook yeah yeah for sure and i think that's I mean, that's really good, especially for where you're at now, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. since you're losing them by death, which is Mm. kind of, there's no coming back. Yeah, Um, there's no coming back from that. And that's where, like, there's no coming back, you know. Yeah. And you could spend, and yeah, maybe if you spent three weeks instead of two in this place, let's say, it would get better. Mm -hmm. But that means there's three other places in front of you that are getting worse. Yeah. You know. Yeah to put it into perspective and then you stick in this place for now four weeks and you could have had two weeks in two different places that benefited Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. and if this is a like a uh an ability or a skill or a gift that you've crafted then and it's used in a sense that you can put in the practice for the two weeks set them straight and then Mm -hmm. move on and set more people straight Mm -hmm. there's a net positive larger it's hard to yeah. you know quantify yeah. these things yeah, but it sure. is in that sense because yeah maybe somebody got ca- kicked out because they had cigarettes or whatever mm. but their bed's open now and another guy that wants to try and hopefully stick to the rules now has an opportunity right you know yeah what about but but like that's the thing though is with the addicts mm-hmm. like it's not death like it you can come back from it you can come back yeah is there like another program for people who are living through the addiction at that moment and actually struggling you know because if you get kicked out like yeah that's a new bed for someone but also like that is a yeah you know yeah so the two places i've been at the first one was a 90 day treatment facility so 90 days you graduate you're out okay the uh, the second one was as long as you're making progress you can stay here for as long as you want Hmm. Ru- like longest somebody would stay there is two years mm-hmm. we had one at the time that i was there one guy was there for a year and a half and okay. what happens there is um at the end like about i think seven or eight months in at that point it's expected of you that you're at that point you're very cleaned up at that point mm-hmm. and you finish they have some education classes for you mm-hmm. and so you already finished that and then at the end there you should be looking for or holding down a job yeah and you get to stay there for free and build a budget and um, build enough money for either a down payment on a home or an apartment in sober living. Yeah. Um, 
I forget your question, actually. <laughs> well, <is it> like <laughs> what was your question? Well, it's just, it's just like if someone leaves, do they have the opportunity to come mm. back? Mm. Like if they're kicked out, they brought drug in. It's like, obviously, you can't have that yeah. in the rehabilitation yeah. center. You can't. Yeah. But so I guess I was the model is that you stick in our program and we'll get you back on your feet. And so breaking that rule, you're just going to be back onto the streets. But there's still resources on the streets. There's homeless okay. shelters and stuff like that. Right. But they're not going to provide necessarily um, addiction services to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and for a lot of them, we get them from the homeless shelters. Mm -hmm. So if you, if that was your particular, you know, like context is needed. But um, if that was your particular case, then yes, we gave you resources. You screwed them up. Now you, we're going to reset you for a little bit. And, you know, depending on how great the offense was, yeah. like if they got in a fight with somebody, they're probably not coming back in. But if yeah. they got, I don't know, something very small, you know, um, there's depending. It's a it's a staff decision at that point, whether yeah, they come back in, you know, yeah. at least for our facility I can talk about mm -hmm. that I was working in. So, um, yeah, if, like if you picked a fight with somebody that it was definitely on you, then we're probably not going to let you back in gotcha. and stuff yeah, like yeah. that, you know? Yeah. Um, and then there's also like guys that are not going to change mm. guys that mm -hmm. have been homeless for 30 plus years mm -hmm. and it's so habituated and that's a, ver a not a majority percentage I would say, but yeah. there are guys like that, you know? And so you, you have to at some point kind of sift through the ones that aren't going to make it because you want to, the best you can have all beds with guys that are going to make it, yeah. but you just can't ensure that, you know, For sure. like there's guys yeah, that yeah. you're like, Oh, you're going all the way. Like you're good. And maybe that wasn't even like healthy to tell them, you know, because like th I'm thinking of one specific guy mm -hmm. we were like that with. And then two weeks later he's kicked out for being drunk on hand sanitizer. And to be able to do that is pretty impressive mm -hmm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I think he blew like a 2.0. Wow. which like can't wow. even drive at point eight. Yeah. So wow. stuff like that. It's like, I'm very sad to kick you out, but I have to. Mm -hmm. So that's hard. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah. But yeah, that's what we were talking about where beds can be open. Positions can be filled and mm -hmm. opened that are necessary, you know? Yeah. And it's almost selfish to stay there, you know, if you have, yeah. If you have that ability. If you have achieved, yeah. if you yeah, yeah. are back on your it's feet. It's almost a duty mm -hmm. to keep going. For sure. Or even if you do want to stay there, do something more fulfilling, get on staff, open that bed up, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Work yeah. work to help others, you know, yeah. instead of yeah. just being like, this is nice. Yeah. Or leave your two-week stay is also or, what I'm referencing. Oh, yeah. Leave that because yeah. it's a little selfish to stay because now you're kind of secure here. Yeah. But it's not necessarily good to be secure. Mm-hmm. You want to push the boundaries a bit and get to a new place. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. That's a really good point. I think it's situational, though, too. Mm -hmm. Like, the, if you were, like, yeah. two weeks here, then two weeks there, then, you know, yeah, sometimes yeah. you want to spend yeah. longer time yeah. in each community. Yeah, like, months ago, I heard a line from somebody, and it was like, if things aren't clicking, you're being too rigid. Mm. And it's just like, have a little bit more flow. Let it kind of just go its course, you know, but also um, don't get stuck in the ebbs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. If things are rigid. If things are too if rigid. If things are too rigid, yeah, it's yeah. not clicking. So you have okay. just too many rules on yourself, yeah, yeah. too many guidelines, too many things to follow. Because rules contradict all the time. Yeah. And true. then when you have a hundred of them that are all contradicting, then you're basically in a cage, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I like that. Lose some of the rules. I like that. Yeah. That really yeah, helped yeah. me. Because I am orderly, mm -hmm. but too much order is a problem as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. yeah. Understanding that rules can be adapted. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. And it's, um, I think in another sense, it's, you're not trying to be in service of the rules. The rules need to be in service of you. Mm. Or you the know? goal. Or the, the goal. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully you're in service of the goal itself, you know, mm -hmm. whatever that is. But you need a certain amount of discipline to get to that but when you make like in a certain sense the discipline the goal then you don't have any pr progress yeah you know yeah 
Like if you focus more in the gym on getting sore than building muscle, you're not going to get strong actually Mm. because you want to be able to work out every day. Mm. That's Mm -hmm. a good goal to have if you're starting out in the gym. Yeah. If you're sore every, if you're sore every day and you work out every day, then you're, you're going to work out very poorly and not have as much efficiency as if you just did a little bit today, a little bit the next day. Mm. Oh, third day, I'm a little bit stronger. I can do a little bit more. But then fourth day, I'm again stronger a bit more. And that's more taken over months, but yeah. that's the right. idea behind it. Building up. Yeah. I got to take that into account with rock climbing. <laughs> do you? Yeah. Because you've gone a bunt. Have you, how many times have you gone lately? Well, the past three days in a row. Yeah. Um, that's, that's what, yeah, I thought. <laughs> but it was like, I hadn't climbed since like before spring break. <laughs> because yeah. of these gnarly <laughs> cuts knee. and I got sick. So I was like really pumped yeah or even if i do climb every day which i think is not bad because mm-hmm. i think you should do physical activity every day mm-hmm. i need to regulate which days are my easy days and which days are the hard ones and that kind of mm. thing because sometimes i do just want to keep climbing keep climbing, <laughs> keep climbing and then i'm really sore and i yeah. do it again yeah. And yeah well it's not a it's never a problem if you recover enough that's mm-hmm. the other rule of thumb that's yeah. good like not today but the last two days i didn't work out because i got sub six hours of sleep ah. and i've been learning a lot that sleep is very needed for a lot of things mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. like i just let two days well like two days ago didn't get enough sleep so then i let that reset get a good night's sleep and then last night good night's sleep and then i was able to hit a good today okay. you know yeah. so just allowing recovery to catch up with you as well yeah because if you have three shit days, but one good day, I'd rather have the one good day, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and then two off days mm-hmm. if I had to choose between the two. Yeah. Yeah. I'm taking these. Well, I'm supposed to be. It's funny. Sorry to interrupt, but no, it's you funny. Go. You've climbed the last three days <laughs> and don't want to do a boulder competition. Yeah. That is for <laughs> climbing. I, I know it might yeah. sound like it's supposed to. Climbing people are chill as yeah, fuck. They are, I know. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm getting at as well. Is you enjoy climbing? It'll mm-hmm. be in a in a very fun loving, safe sense. Like there won't be any yeah. pressure on you. People always cheer, especially when yeah. you go big. You know. Yeah. So, and you're a good climber. All right. I mean, a lot of my friends are in the two three range, and you're like a. On your good days, you're a four or five. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. So. On the good days. On the good yeah. days. Well, especially when you don't take off uh, two weeks and <laughs> fuck your knee up and <laughs> fall down a hill. and Mountain, excuse you. Cross states <laughs> away from your climbing gym. Uh, yes. When you don't do all those things. <laughs> then, yeah. You're on good, a good, you're on a good stroke. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll make that a, maybe I'll make that a goal this summer at the gym back home. With my friends Jacqueline and Wida, we'll join comps together until I gain confidence. That's fine. I'll do that. But come this weekend as well. I'm and coming. Si- and sign I'm coming. up. <laughs> I don't know. You get a t-shirt. I don't know. I'm, I don't, yeah. I don't even get paid to say this. I know. I just think you should compete. <laughs> <He's just thinking>. <laughs> like. <laughs> I've been to, this is, well, besides the Olympics, I got to go to the Olympics, which was really cool. Oh. It was awesome. Yeah. But besides that, this will be like the one climbing conch I've climbing comp i've ever like gone to mm. besides when we were there and we just happened to like to randomly randomly watch a top rope yeah, comp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so i want to i want to see it i want to see it i, I don't i haven't like. i don't know what to expect either like i thought they were when i signed up they were gonna have like a beginner middle yeah expert or whatever yeah they had none of that That's and so interesting. the four sessions the first one was sorted out like i said and then the one the fourth one had 29 spots open so, so I don't know if that's, like, mm. out of 30. I don't know what that's out of. Oh, fair. And if that's one yeah. person that signed up, I'm really curious <laughs> how this is going to look. The first one's mm. going to be full, so I almost want to go there and just watch it. Yeah. But then I'll yeah. be in the second s- session, which you should join, and we can – well, we can – how about this? Sign mm. up for the second one. Mm. We'll climb that one, but mm. then we can go to the first one. And like enjoy and it actually see time. and enjoy oh, yeah. that'd be your watch time. That'd be my watch. And yeah, we'd have yeah. two sessions after ours. It's like an like they budget like an hour and a half. Like it's not much for at all. each session. I think so. That's pretty good amount of it's time. It's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, on a day I climb for four. True. Yeah, so. but this isn't. This this is more like you only do a couple. You know. Yeah. 
I guess different. I don't know what to expect. Okay, I don't fair. know what yeah, to yeah. picture at all. Like I, I saw the top rope one, but they had like classes mm-hmm. and I guess you get breaks in between. I don't yeah. know. So most, yeah, most so, yeah. competitions. <laughs> we can watch the more. first, <laughs> and you know more than me, right now. Uh, I'll think about it. Maybe I'll sign up tonight. I'll pay for yours. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, it's fifteen bucks. Huh? Fifteen bucks. I can drop that. You get a T-shirt. I just my mom just Venmo me fifteen dollars for it. No. Ah. <laughs> She's like Happy Easter. Aww. It was so sweet. <laughs> uh, yeah. Sweet. Throw that on the. Throw it on the rock yeah. My mom would be proud. The website isn't working for most people. Oh, okay. So you have to use the service center. Oh, just okay. Just FYI, at least that's how it worked for me. And that's the one that's in the rec. Just yeah, where just where okay, you check yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you should do it. It'll be fun. Session two. Session two. <laughs> we can watch session one. You should really do it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What time is it? Do you remember? Two fifteen, I think, is session two. Is that session two? Okay. I think so. Okay. So then one or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm going also. Me and my friends are going to. Um, it's like a fundraiser mm. for adopting dogs. Oh, it's nice. It's really cute. That sounds awesome. <laughs> I know, but I, that's like from one to five. So after I climb, I could go there for the last like hour, which is plenty of time. Oh, the fundraisers. The one fundraisers to five? one to five. On the day. Yeah, it's like free pizza and adopting dogs, and you support. Oh, I have the flyer. <laughs> Are you gonna go to the whole thing? <laughs> no, that's that's why I was like after I climb. Oh, after I climb, I could yeah. Go okay. To okay. I got you. There it is. That's a cute picture. <laughs> I know they did such a good job. Is it through the campus? Um, Cosmos. Oh, I, yeah, no, that's I a sorority or for. Oh, then, yeah. Or fraternity, I don't know. That's cool, though. I know, right? Cosmos is good pizza. It is good pizza, and it's free. <laughs> mm. Children's Network, come support That'll Children's Network. Yeah. So I'm doing that, but I can always do that after. Yeah. Yeah. So right, you're, I'll think so about it. I'll, th- I'll think you're about climbing. it. I'll <laughs> think about it. You're signed up right now. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe I'll make my. Mm, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fun, actually. I should get out of my comfort zone. Yes. I should get out yes. of my comfort zone. I yes. should do it. All right, I'll sign up tonight. Heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it'll be fun. We'll get a good um, start to it yeah. with just watching. Yeah, We can true. watch the whole first true, session. True, true. Probably even see some of the routes mm-hmm. so we can c- get an idea. Mm-hmm. And then we'll hit session two. Ooh. It's just like an hour and a half. Yeah, You're not an climbing hour and a half the whole time. Yeah, exactly. Fun. Yeah, it'll yeah, be yeah. fun. I think I'm, I'm. I'll have to work on, or at least attempt to work on overhangs before we oh. go. Oh, I just those are my. I wonder the, how they'll the killer. I give love me crimps all day, but give me an overhang and I'm some crimp. Gone. You like crimps? I love crimps. Mm. What do they got? Are you working on anything in there right now? There's a really cool V v4 purple one that you like campus over the overhang ca- cave mm. it's really cool and it's like on slopers is too. that the so you campus on slopers yeah. which is fun and then there's like a yeah i like that one yeah that one's fun, fun. do you, you heel hook it uh-huh yeah i've gotten there but i haven't gotten to the oh you haven't hole. finished it no oh. you said are you working on any oh fair yeah yeah come on i've been out of practice you're out of, you're out, I'm yeah. out of practice well i think I'm going to go in two or three days. So you could recharge. Go climbing go in climb two or three days? Oh, okay. In like two or three days. Are there any other fun ones that you saw? Hmm. Yeah, but I mean, they reset everything on Saturday. The, so I don't know if you've the been there slab since. that has its own mini cave. Those ones, oh, yeah. the fives are like fours, just for the really? record. And the six is a five. The I got mini, the six. The mini cave? No, the slab next to the mini oh, cave. Okay, yeah. Okay, I'll try those. The, I mean, yeah. They said I'm super soft. Oh, yeah. I got the six. <laughs> yeah. But it's not a six. <laughs> like, uh, it's like a five. But you can call it a six. You could say a soft I don't, six. I don't feel good calling it a, a six. a soft six. Because, like, I guess it's a soft six. It's a soft six. But that's the tricky thing. Like, I went back home mm-hmm. a couple weeks back, and a new gym opened up. And mm-hmm. because they were new, they didn't want to set any hard routes. Oh. So I did a V7. <laughs> but the guy's like... Because I knew him, he's yeah. like decoding all the what the routes actually are. Because he, he was a he's like a probably a V nine climber at least yeah. I would say, and he's like decoding them. He's like, yeah, that seven's actually a five, oh, that's an eight, that five's a four. Like actually yeah. decoding what they actually were. Yeah. 
I was like, oh, so I just did a four. Mm-hmm. I didn't do a seven. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> a seven would be huge for me. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm not even at a six range. Yeah. You know. Well, I. That's the tough thing about rating systems like that. Yeah, because especially because like every um, gym is different. Uh-huh. Like the rec center actually sets really soft. They do set they soft. They set really soft. Because yeah, you go yeah. to like Whetstone and I was like trying a three and I was like, what? The threes are hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah when you could flash like, a three yeah, in the gym. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So it, it really depends, which is why I say like solidly I'm a V4 right now. Hmm. Even though sometimes I can do V5s, I don't mm-hmm. think I've reached that that quota yet. In that gym, I can do four or fives. Mm-hmm. There's some fives in there mm-hmm. I can get. Exactly. But th- that's the thing. It's like there are some, some fives, yeah, you know? Yeah. When I could, if I work on them or mm-hmm. sometimes not, I can always get like a V4. Yeah. Know? I always wonder about that though. Cause like, like Ascent or Whetstone, the other climbing gyms, mm-hmm. I wonder if it's like, because we have home court advantage here. Yeah. Cause I go there at least two times a week. And so yeah. I already know like 80% when they like reset the wall, mm-hmm. I already know 80% of the routes. So I can focus on 20% yeah. for a whole session. Mm-hmm. So I wonder if that's, there's a good advantage there. And if I spent two days a week, for like three months in a wet in whetstone or a scent <laughs> if i did that i'd get yeah. more comfortable and actually still be sending the same routes i don't know yeah. you know because no definitely it's a big difference when you go to a new gym it is. and you're like pretty intimidated know, even if you're a like a, a climber like a good climber you're like i'm just gonna stick to the twos <laughs> <laughs> just stay down here <laughs> that's it. actually i started going to whetstone on tuesdays because mm. i was like volunteering with the matthews house they yeah. do a program there yeah and it was really fun but i was like dang <laughs> I, I, it's totally mental game it was difficult mm-hmm. i don't know are you turning me up no <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm trying to stay away from the mic because i'm nervous to be too loud oh you're definitely not gonna be too loud okay good you've definitely been more on the quiet side oh good that i like that that's more my personality, but I'll. I'll I thought Jonah up. was quiet, quiet yesterday, but I re-listened to it and he was good. Oh okay. Um, yeah, these are so cool because they're like directional. I know. You it's know, really it's really cool. weird. That's why it's nice because like, cause, like sound. yeah, <laughs> like I'd like to kind of test them in the courtyard there where everybody's screaming yeah. and see if they actually like. Oh, true. Picked up the side sounds. Because you could just like point it. If you point, point it at it, the dude. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. And this also came with like a, its own like recording attachment on top. Okay. So I can directly record from this with like no cables. So like I could do almost oh, like, like an interview situation. Microphones? Yeah. Could, well, it has a, like cool. a, it's a microphone attachment on top. Right. So you could take these guys out. Yeah. And, and just okay. have this as a handheld Yeah, that's thing. cool. That's cool. Yeah. You could do like on-campus interviews. Yeah. I love <laughs> those videos. <laughs> They're so fun. And then there's... um. You can get a different attachment and add two more mics. So you could have up to like, well, I, I think you could infinitely attach them. Yeah. But you could do like six. Right mm-hmm. now I can do four off Which this. Which is good. This That's is really good. I think more than four, you get too many voices going, mm-hmm. you know? Like mm-hmm. I, the only thing is like, I want to do one with my family at some point. Oh, that's and, fun. But I have a family of five. Yeah, so you would need So I'm another. like, somebody's going to have to sit out or yeah. something. <laughs> <laughs> or just share a microphone. You could just, like, sit here yeah, and share. I, and then you could bump it over. Because once talking, you can kind of hear it, and then they'll move the microphone that's over. That's true. You know? That's true. That'd be fine. That would be f- – oh, that'd be fun. Yeah. That'd be cool. I would like to have my family on the podcast, too, but they'd be so loud. <laughs> and they'd interrupt well, we each other all that, the time. Though. That's the thing. <laughs> just crank yeah. people's volume down. Um, that's a good point. I thought about like trying to like rent the system out to people Ooh. like 20 bucks. I'll record okay. your family talk for three hours. Oh, oh, but like, so they would take the gear or you would, I think I would sit with it. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, like, That's but I'll, scary. I'll record it for you. And so like oh, a family cool. with like two kids can have a recorded Aww. and I'd like to get the video aspect in yeah. so they could have a videoed recorded episode mm. of them. Have you ever thought about doing that with your cl- with your the people you work with right now? Yes, I'm worried. I wouldn't. I'm, I'm worried about uh, confidentiality agreements oh, in there. True. I haven't asked anybody about that yet, but I have thought mm. about that. Because you could like have them sign a document that says that it'll like They're it goes okay to their it. family. Yeah. You know? yeah, maybe not post it, but it could just be for them. You yeah, know? that'd be cool. Yeah, I'm sure they'd love yeah. that too. Yeah. So there's a lot of things I want to do with it, which yeah. is really cool. Oh, but cool. like the renting out part, I really like because then it would mm-hmm. pay for itself. Yeah. I would make this money back. 
is what yeah. I was thinking. You, you make know? money and you could just get to sit and listen to a family talk. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like these were pretty solid mics that I got. So it would mm -hmm. be an investment to get two more to then have like a family yeah, of four. Be I was going to gonna talk. say these are nice. Because it's not like it's going to be all butter the whole time just mm -hmm. making gobs of money. Like a camera, a good camera and like the whole setup will that's be. A lot, a you know, lot. so yeah. I don't think it'll be like a scam in any sense, you mm -hmm. know, especially if they want a recording. Mm -hmm. I just, I want to get like, this is why I want to do it with friends as well. Yeah. Cause I want to get like this whole system down and then it could be more marketable, yeah. I guess, you know, that's cool. But um, well, you've done a great job. Did you research the products before buying them? Um, for like three weeks <laughs> for so long, <laughs> well, for so good, long. You did, a good, you did a good job. Thank you. <laughs> you should interview. There's this guy named Mark. He's a homeless guy, and he sits on the exact same corner in okay. Old Town every single night. He's That'd there every weekend. I think I've sat with him like three times now, mm. and we just people watch and talk. Yeah. You should totally do that. Maybe not the microphones, because that's like a... I could even I facilitate know. it, and you guys can talk. That's true. He, he's I'm a fine fun guy. Yeah. And we could just take like the little piece, you know, mm -hmm. and then say, this is just a sample. If you want, we'll actually <laughs> interview with real mics. <laughs> He's a he's a cool guy and he sits there every single night. So he's seen like so much mm. and people know him. They walk by and they're like, "What's up, Mark?" <laughs> he's just an cool. old town. Yeah, okay. just an old town. It's cool. I think it's on the corner of College and Mountain. Mountain. Evan. Okay. But I'm not sure. I just know it by like appearance, not by mm. like the roads. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I wish I knew the roads better up here, especially in Old Town. But mm -hmm. Google Maps kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's, just, it's too, too convenient. It's too easy. <laughs> it's too, I miss like, it's so, I miss the grid system in Salt Lake City. Mm -hmm. We had, it was like every temple, it would kind of like restart. Mm. So there was like a temple in Salt Lake City and then you'd go all the way down to American Fork and there's a new temple. And these are the Mormon temples, no, if Mormon that makes temples. sense. Yeah. Okay. And then it was so awesome because it would just be like 100, 200, 300, 400. And, and then that was like south right mm -hmm. and then 100 200 all east mm. so someone could give me their address and be like i'm on 1499 like downington avenue south or whatever and yeah. i could get there without any directions even yeah. if it was like a 20 minute drive yeah and here i'm like oh every street is a name yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> yeah when i see numbers i think it's weird really? but they're definitely easier they're so like i definitely easier. think they're easier but yeah. um yeah because we have all names up here and it gets confusing mm -hmm. because like as you go south on college, mm -hmm. that turns to Garfield when you hit Loveland. Oh. And then here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. No, it turns. To, what is it? I'm messing this up now. <laughs> Taft? No, oh. that's it. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taft yeah. Uh -huh. turns into some other road. And then Shields, one, right when you get into Loveland, mm -hmm. turns into Taft. Oh, why? But the roads don't intersect at all. They just oh, named them that way. It's oh, so it doesn't make any sense. freaking confusing. Ugh. Yeah. That that bothers me mm -hmm. more than anything. Mm -hmm. Like, just pick any different name. Mm -hmm. Call it pig. Call it whatever you want to call it. Wood chips. <laughs> I don't care. Just not the uh, same name other things are called. Yeah. Like, what are you thinking? I. That's why. So my grandma bought me a road map of all of Colorado when I moved here. Okay. So I can keep it in my car. Yeah. Because then if I if Siri's never not working or not Siri Google Maps is never yeah. not working, I can just pull out the map old fashioned. Mm -hmm. I think that's really smart. I think everyone should do that. Yeah. Yeah. I think everyone should have little like kits of stuff in their car. Mm -hmm. I don't see why you wouldn't. We were talking about keeping it. dog food in our car the other day, <gasps> a, I, see, just because they're not oh. perishable at all. Yeah. Um, I thought about like getting rid of everything on my phone except for like text and call because mm -hmm. I need that for work. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but music and Google Maps are yeah. like needed things that aren't that actually add value. You know. Mm -hmm. I was like, Google Maps, I could. Um, like print them off from my computer <laughs> if I really oh had to. God. That was like how they used to do it when like before uh, GPS was like in cars, you know, mm -hmm. but then they mm -hmm. still had it on personal computers. Mm -hmm. You could print out directions. Do you know, you know about this, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, so I thought about like just going old school with that for a bit, but that's the tough thing about getting just like a bare bones flip phone for me Yeah. is I like, yeah. I like Spotify. Mm -hmm. Like I listen to a lot of music. Mm hmm and no like you know the light phone no it's like a bare bones phone like that oh, okay. but it still doesn't have the music on it see yeah and i'm like and they're like trying to be more um i guess humane with how their phone's made you know because ours oh, are made overseas and everything sure. like that mm. um which i love as well 
but uh, if I can't, I mm. need music, man. I Maybe, need to listen yeah. to music. Hmm. Um, I agree with that. I also I love taking videos. Videos, yeah. 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 That would be tough. And voice memos. Oh, Snapchat memories. You were curious about oh. me showing you that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah do you yeah. know how to how that works at all? I do. I oh. do now. But well, no. Okay, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know how to look at the like the camera roll that Snapchat. Yeah. Like all those press things. But when it's like a year ago today, yeah. I can't find that anywhere. So let me see. Right, you know where it says the memories thing? Yeah. That will have a little red dot. When that, I get new that ones, little that little icon, oh. it'll have a red dot. I think I checked it today. Okay. <laughs> You're on top of it. Um, I checked it because it had one for the oh, 19. Flashback. And it was two, two years ago with my dogs. Oh, that's cute. Oh, look at these guys. Oh, they're doing like the a... construction guys? No, they, they're Is like... construction? No, it's like for STEM majors, they like measure, um, I don't know, hills and stuff. <laughs> I saw them last year. There's not this many of them, though, there. There's a lot of people. Well, I lost my phone, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll, find it. we'll find it eventually. <laughs> what? <laughs> I have no idea. Genuinely, I have no idea. This happens all the time, man. Is it not in your pocket? No. I'm just really bad with material possessions. <laughs> I just, I'm really bad. It's right there. <sighs> Oh, it's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's on your right. Okay, let me let me check. Mm. There's a lot of people. I don't like this. Well, at least it's directional microphone. It is so directional. Can, I feel like like interviewing one of them. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Hmm. You getting anything? No. See? And your phone's new too, right? Yeah. Do you just not have photos that are old maybe <laughs> i think i'm actually very new to snapchat how old? yeah how long have you had it well i got it like a year and a half ago but then i so kind of logged off time. for like a long time oh, okay so maybe yeah because you need actual photos in there that you took on snapchat that's a there's good start the dilemma. for them to show you photos <laughs> there's the dilemma <laughs> um, i guess i just have to keep snapchat then for a while that's yeah I'm that's why i love snapchat because I guess it is social media mm -hmm. with the stories and the other, like, tiles you can click on, you know? Yeah. But, like, I love how quick I can just send a video to my friend or a photo yeah. or, yeah. like, video myself talking to them, mm -hmm. explaining mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I forget what you were talking about, but I totally weren't wasn't listening for a good minute oh, because enough. I saw your eyebrow <laughs> oh. and I remember that you shaved it and I was like oh it's <laughs> it's going back it's now. coming back <laughs> but it's God. still <laughs> patchy <laughs> I and I, I'm like I keep, I'm so tempted to fix it you're like a knockoff but pirate <laughs> <laughs> everyone was like just get it pierced I was like no I was thinking that same thing no. actually get two just the no. dumb bone right there <laughs> yeah on either side on, well the, yeah like on the, both sides yeah, of yeah, it yeah, yeah. I couldn't. I, I just wanted to grow back. <laughs> I, aren't there like cheek piercings and stuff? Mm -hmm. I've seen. Oh, There's that piercings seems painful. Wherever that's you going want. through stuff. Yeah. That's going they, through like people do it on their tongues. Mm. Like everywhere. Did you see that dude that like every inch of his body's tattooed? Yeah. Like even his even penis. his eyes. Oh. <laughs> 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 well, I would, the I clip would I not. saw with him, he tat. I don't know. He chose like a barber pole. Like you know the red. Um, and I think it's blue and white barber oh, pole. Oh, yeah. That's what he tattooed on it. No. Yes. Oh, right on top of it. Buddy, no. And he didn't tell his girlfriend Why? and she broke up with him. <gasps> I mean, well, wow. That's bad. But, like, you're already dating this dude. Like, picture mm -hmm. him decked out, bald, mm -hmm. completely full yeah. of tattoos. Yeah. Well, maybe and it was, like, a quick relationship. And I guess, like, that's pretty noticeable right on top. God. Especially. It's so bad. <laughs> Betty, no. That's hilarious. Oh, I could <laughs> never. I am getting a tattoo, though, Well, in you next definitely month. couldn't. Unless you're packing down there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Oh. <laughs> no, I could never get every inch of my body tattooed. Ever. Just, ever. like, well, like, there's the pain part. But then there's also the mm. finances part. That, yeah. Like, there's a lot of money and chair time yeah. and healing time. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be a basically a career. Healing time. Yeah. Oh. The healing time alone. Ooh. Yeah. I could handle the pain, I think. I think I could handle the pain. Yeah. But it's the cost and, like, I just, the look of it. 
Mm. I hate that. B- what? I love tattoos. But it is like art. So yeah. you could make it like yeah. an actual like look you like. Mm-hmm. You I know. love tattoos. Don't get me wrong. I'll probably have multiple yeah. more in the future. Like but your whole face? Person- no. Think about that. Personally, I could never do that. <laughs> Ever. Respect, though. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Yeah. Me and my siblings are getting one. How soon before you're just numb? Like, what percent oh. of your body do you think you just... Just all the nerves You just are shut dead. off to it? Well, you, like, just get used to it. Yeah. Because, like... You do it like climbing. Mm-hmm. You climb for three months, you're going to stop tearing your fingers. Like yeah, your body yeah. adapts to that pain and stressor. Yeah. So your body would at some point adapt to a needle <laughs> piercing your skin. <laughs> I think pretty think. quickly. After like the seventh tattoo. Yeah. I would say, yeah. Oh, yeah. The seventh. Well, it's also like it's dependent Depends on, on size. where where it is, and too. Where. Yeah. Like the top of the foot. Oh. Ow. Yeah. Right? Both but then, feet. Yeah. Oh. Then you get it on just like your thigh yeah. or something. It's not as bad. Yeah. So I think that depends too. Which apparently, did you know that the least painful place for a tattoo is right behind your ear? Isn't that shocking? Yeah, like right there. Well, apparently, it's, not, it's just like hitting? a little buzz. What is even there? Bone? I think so. But wouldn't that hurt? Yeah. I, I thought know. like, well, like, isn't the cartilage one of the worst parts? Like that's why your phone cartilage your foot and is then bad? like. Yeah, like your nerves. Like you, well, because the foot, you've got all those like veins and nerves that connect. Mm. Same with hands. That's I why it's bad. I guess there's not bad. much nerves up there, right? Yeah, there's it's nothing. Bone, I there's guess. There's nothing. It's just like skin and. Well, there's those. Um, do you know like the sunglasses that um, play music through your bones, like they vibrate them? <gasps> what? That's cool. Yeah. So Whoa. like, they're like, where's mine? They're like these are super thick because mm-hmm. they have to hold all the electronics and stuff like that. Oh, you but then, have them? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. But it's like this, and then the these are super thick because they have to mm. hold all the electronics, and then this right here will like end right below your ear. Okay. And it doesn't act as a speaker; it vibrates the music into your wow. ear because your eardrum is a vibration. Yeah. As well. That's cool. And then there's like, those were like five years ago I saw, so they're probably oh, even better wow. now. Yeah. Um. And then Is that latest, Bluetooth? yeah, they were Bluetooth. Um, latest <laughs> have a little cord hanging <laughs> yeah. down of your headphones. <laughs> um, but then latest was like these earbuds. I saw somebody review and you know how like you have the touch controls on the side normally. Mm-hmm. Th- their touch controls were on your ear, like, what? like on the corner there, right here. Wow. Cause if you feel there's like a bone right here, your jaw bone that, that ends up yeah. there. Yeah. So you tap, like tap once for pause, double tap to skip. And it like, I guess, senses the vibration. Interesting. I, I mean, don't know. That makes, I feel like that kind of makes sense. I feel like sense. that's the future almost. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, which is like trying to extrapolate that, like being able to toggle technology through touch vibrations through our bones. Hmm. When you sum it hmm. up like that, sounds interesting yeah. <laughs> to say that like what yeah. could be accomplished, you know? For sure. Because we're like slowly integrating with technology. Mm. you know agreed yeah like our phones are on us at all times mm-hmm. they're just not attached at th- this point you know <laughs> for now <laughs> for now but i don't know mm. like like i think it became our phones and then earbuds got to a certain place where like everywhere you walk on campus like everybody has an earbud in mm-hmm. and like i've even had conversations with people with earbuds in mm-hmm. and like they were actually listening and stuff like yeah. that yeah, so it's almost a point and they had their phone in their hand, you know, so you almost have this attachment here mm-hmm. and that attachment up there mm-hmm. and they just toggle the ambient noise on mm-hmm. so they can still talk to you. Yeah. Nothing's just like surgically there, but they're still like just implanted um, by proxy, I guess you could say. Yeah. Which is weird to think about. It's and I guess watches about. like I wear For this sure. every single day yeah. and it's got a strap and it's easy. It's out of the way, I guess. But like. This might have been a one one of the first things you just carry all at all yeah. times, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Definitely. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I know for some people, like, they have to have headphones in their ears, like, for their anxiety and social anxiety. Mm. So, like, them to, like, allow them to listen to music all the time helps them socially. Yeah. Which is really interesting. I mean, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> I c- personally can't do it. If yeah. I have music even in one ear, mm-hmm. I'll solely focus on the music and I'll like blank out on conversations. Yeah. Yeah. So, but my roommate, she listens, she has headphones in like all the time. Uh, for anxiety or just mm-hmm. okay. for social anxiety. Yeah. 
and it helps her a lot. Like she's better talking to you with a headphone in than not. Mm. I'm trying to find like I'm trying oh, to, yeah. That's a little better maybe. I don't know. Against the wind. Um these are windscreens, so they should help. Ooh. But um Fancy. <laughs> What was I gonna say? That worries me. Yeah. I almost said bothers, but mm-hmm. like to each his own. Mm-hmm, it worries mm-hmm. me how many people like can't deal with their anxiety i guess mm, yeah and i would still respect them and everything like that but it bothers me that they can't to mm. a certain level as well hmm. but i'll uh, i would stick with worries at the very least because yeah. it's just harder to function when that rules you the whole time you know yeah which is like that's exactly the point that's why they need the music you know because yeah for some people come like getting over oh my god that's brooke Never mind. For Richard? Some, no. Oh. <laughs> For some people, um, <laughs> that's so funny. For some people, uh, getting over anxiety is like pretty, it's pretty easy or not easy, but like you can get there. Yeah. And then for other people, it's like chemically an imbalance, you know? Yeah. But that's a f- small percentage. That's yeah, a lot smaller there, than though. the amount that's reported. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like there's a lot of it that's actually curable pretty quickly mm-hmm. without, um, um, pharmacology needed. Yeah. You know, yeah, I don't know. I feel like music is a really good outlet because it's not it's not consuming, I guess. But like, what are you gonna do when you don't have music? Well, that's where you learn and adapt, hopefully. But and like, if not, then you kind of are hit with the realization of what it is. Yeah. You know. I don't know. I mean, it makes sense. Like, if people are hiding behind their music, mm-hmm. that could be an issue that maybe the anxiety never gets resolved Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah but would you say that's an issue if it doesn't get resolved um i think it's an issue if it's never confronted yeah because i don't want to say never resolved because like i know for me i have to take medication for anxiety and depression and for like i tried as soon as i found out that that was like an issue i had i tried for like four and a half years to deal with it in other ways or treat it in other ways okay um, and then I was like, okay, I'll try medication and just see. But I, I just, for so long, I resisted that because I was like, I don't want that to like uh, become dependent on it, you know? Yeah. But it really was like, it didn't matter what was going on in my life, didn't matter what practices I was doing, how I was living, my great connections with people. Like, it's like as soon as I was alone, boom, really like dark thoughts and all that stuff. Mm. And then when I started taking even just 10 milligrams of the medication every day, it went away. And and it was super relieving. Okay. Um, and that's something that I think is really good for people. Like, obviously, I'm a big um, advocator for not getting on meds immediately mm-hmm. because I know my sister had, like, a similar problem, but she was able to solve it through something else, you know? Mm-hmm. But I think there are cases where it's it's important, you know? Yeah. It can, it can help. Yeah. But if it's never confronted, then there's the issue. Yeah. 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 I think, like... I, I'm not worried that it's not going to be confronted. I think everybody's mm-hmm. going to meet their maker at some point. Mm-hmm. That's not what I'm worried about. What I would love to see and what would make me less bothered, I guess, mm-hmm. is that you just confront it now while times are good. Because mm-hmm. then when times are bad, then you're ready to confront it when times are bad. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. That's, that's my take, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, like, like, we live in a very easy existence relatively right now. Like, especially if you need to listen to music just to walk to class, I would say like, and obviously if I was talking to somebody directly, I'd say, all right, five minutes, no music. And then you can put it on. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's like 15 minutes to get to class. Mm -hmm. Do that for a week, get comfortable there. Mm -hmm. And then next week we're going to do 10 minutes. And then the last five minutes right before class, you can listen to a song or two. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to ask you to do the whole thing, not with music. Mm-hmm. And then you do that for a semester and get comfortable in your own thoughts and you're by yourself. And mm-hmm. maybe there's somebody that is coming out of class as you're going in class and you actually get a wave to somebody instead of stare down at the floor and listen to music. So then mm-hmm. more opportunities open up to you as well. Mm-hmm. And then at the end of that semester, your major requires an internship for you and you land the interview of the place that you want to get because you're actually more comfortable in your skin mm-hmm. because the job interview is not going to allow you to play music in your Spotify yeah. while you're interviewing. Yeah. And I mean, all of that makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah. 
Like yeah. I'm worried not people aren't dealing with it while they have the chance. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. I think they're all going to, we're all going to get to confront it. They'll get there one That's day. That's the thing. <laughs> we're all going to get there. Yeah. All roads lead there. But why not do it now while times are easy? Oh, fear for sure. Exactly. <laughs> but you got to break through that, right? Hopefully. Yeah. I yeah. guess that message is just something that needs to be. I, I think we're missing it. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. Also though key point we are very privileged yes very i mean one percent of the population has like the funds to get airpods i got knockoff versions <laughs> hey oh everybody go to amazon so like <laughs> i'm not there's a lot of people you know out of this conversation so this is a very this is a very yeah this small is small group of people yeah but this is but still like important tens of thousand people yeah in, in our like first world countries, yeah. Well, that no, in our university that have the ability to fight their little demons right now mm-hmm. is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. While there's that 99 percent still worrying about real problems, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. But it's all like relative. Like, I, wherever you're at, I want you to clean up the mess you got. Mm. So if your demons right now are your anxiety getting the class, mm-hmm. clean that up, and then let's move on. If you're worried about your roof caving in because of airstrikes, mm-hmm. let's worry about that mm-hmm. too. Like whatever, but like, let's not go two weeks and do our best not to think about it mm-hmm. because it's still going to be there in two weeks. But here's the other fun catch. You're two weeks older. Mm-hmm. Your house is two weeks older. The music you've been listening to is two weeks earlier. You're two more weeks into the semester closer to that job interview. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter that you um were able to escape fear it doesn't matter at all yeah you know yeah it might matter to you and your little bubble you know Mm -hmm. and sometimes that bubble is due to like a good economic advantage and privilege Mm -hmm. and yeah i just think that's my take on it i guess yeah and that's that's such a rare mindset but Mm -hmm. that's so good Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine if everybody was able to tap into that mindset? Yeah. Woo! You know? <laughs> like, randomly, this was months ago last year, but I had actually the same experience today. But last year, probably at least 12 months ago, I was mm-hmm. walking out of the wreck, and I was listening to Jocko Willink. He, he's an ex-Navy SEAL. Okay. Um, he, he talks about, like, discipline and gratitude and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Lots of different things. But, um... I was walking out with like him talking to my ears, but I tuned him out and I was just picturing everything in the wreck as I was walking out as a war zone. Like I was picturing guns going off and missiles and everything going. Like mm-hmm. I was picturing it as a war zone. Mm-hmm. And I walked outside and it was sunny and it was all nice and good. Mm-hmm. Very thankful that we're not in a war zone, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. but like there, that's the reality for some things. And it's, it was more the ara- the reality for more people a hundred years ago as well, you mm-hmm. know? Like I was walking through Walmart and I dropped my tires off um, to get new tires on my car and I needed, I got this cable actually, not this cable, your headphone cable from that Walmart because I needed a longer one. And so I walked, it was probably a quarter of a mile or something like that. Yeah. Which first of all, I was like, oh, mm. it's like a minute in the car it took me like 10, 20 yeah. 15 minutes whatever yeah. walking but it was fine because i got to think about a lot of things yeah um but it, like traffic was going the whole time so it was very loud and then i walked into the walmart five steps in groceries as far as you can see you know mm. and then more steps in technology mm-hmm. like i was just and it was quiet so it was very like my thoughts were able to just go about and i was like this is very lucky <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but we get it Gosh. every day you yeah. know yeah where yeah yeah, and i like i bought some bananas and (laughs) a Mm. salad and left in the cord you know (laughs) Uh but you can just walk in and buy that for a while yeah i wonder (laughs) there's a certain point in time where like one percent i don't even know the number but like a fraction of the population even knew what a banana was and then trade became a thing and then it was actually circulated Mm -hmm. globalization yeah Yeah. and now we actually like you could get a banana 
three times a day if you want even you know if your you know heart desires yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah but like things we take for granted that were a commodity like mm -hmm. like salt and spices were big commo mm -hmm. commodities a while ago oh yeah and like you buy you can buy salt by the pound if you wanted to yeah you know it's just how that changes yeah and it's like salt's a needed nutrient too you know that's why it was a commodity yeah um wind's kicking up right now it really is I, I think that's why I love that's why I was so excited to come to college because mm. I was like oh I can finally learn about things outside of myself mm. in a in a sense where I mean you anybody can research on their own and I think that's great I love doing that yeah I, I think everybody should yeah but I was excited um to learn it in a sense where I was in like a classroom with a ton of people and a ton of different perspectives yeah. and like doing it in a yes, communal sense exactly and, and I've I've been so grateful for the opportunity to have that education mm -hmm. because then we are talking about globalization and we're talking about the Philippines and we, today we were talking about like a hunger crisis and like um like di dis displacement displacement yeah displacement in like Honduras and stuff like that it's just so cool yeah. so it, it kind of takes you out of your bubble which is really easy to fall into mm -hmm. constantly it's a struggle to keep that mindset of not falling into your bubble mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah falling into that comfort zone yeah where everything's mm -hmm. easy exactly because like or even I, like you know, keep going actually like I was thinking if I just stayed single all my life mm -hmm. worked the job I had stayed in the basement I'm living in I could be set like that could be an easy standard you know like my job pays enough for rent and everything like that and it would work for what life looks like right now mm -hmm. you know but I guess if you take into account everything that's going on it actually doesn't work and I, it's like something I've been really trying to think about of like a there's no like just like diet there's no exact proper diet or mindset is what i'm getting at mm -hmm. but like the best you can to like a universal mindset because you almost want i can't find the i'm trying to find the exact word to really stick to this the best i got is like a meta thought or like a meta um structure for your thoughts almost okay and, and i guess it's like in a sense of um you have to take into account count like now the future but then also like what actions to do but then also if you can how those actions when they manifest what is actually um what energy is shooting off of them at that point as well mm -hmm. so a lot of the downstream effects and the more times out of 10 that you can understand not just what to do in the short term but then how those downstream effects the long term um actually splinter out and pro proliferate mm -hmm. the better you'll be able it, the more you can consciously understand that the better you'll be yeah and that's very like conceptual and heady so i've been trying to nail that down but it's like right now it seems like i could just get by with what i'm doing and be fine but because you it, it's a very simplistic view but then when you add the complexity to it like the people i'm renting from they're building a house three hours away so I'm not going to have their basement for the end of time, for the end of my time. So that's not true, actually. It's like, the more you dig in, you actually find all these faults in it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like, maybe, and it's a lot of things that are out of your control or, and even out of your know-how. Mm -hmm. Like, um, my work, ha the building has been built since the 1960s. They're doing small renovations on it, but don't have the budget for it. Mm -hmm. And there's even word in the air that they want to sell it so it's like even your paycheck that you thought is good is not actually good you know um yeah i'm you could say and that's like um housing and financials which is two big things for people mm -hmm. i feel socially comfortable right now because i'm in with a bunch of friends that i made in college and mm -hmm. i graduated first so i'm ahead but like that's not the point it's like once they graduate there's a solid chance that they're going to go Disperse, off somewhere else. Sure. So all these things, once time takes its place, actually kind of rob you if you sit still, Yeah, you know? And that's what like to bring it back to like the walking to school, like time still robs all of us. That's what always brings us back to our maker. At some point we're going to find it. Mm -hmm. And that's why if you let two weeks go by and you don't work on this thing that's been nagging you, 
when it's the 16 weeks in the semester or up, that's going to actually boil up into your, let's say, job interview that a better you could have gotten, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So stuff like that. And like trying to have, I don't know, it's like a meta framework mm -hmm. where it's like self-referential, but that doesn't do it quite justice. Mm -hmm. But it's still something I'm like trying to conceptualize and build out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, even if even if you could have everything you have right now, right? Take away all of the uncontrollable aspects mm -hmm. that get in the way, right? Like the people you're renting from, mm -hmm. moving and building a house, mm -hmm. and your job being insecure, that's that sort of stuff. Yeah. Take all that away. Is it even, would you even claim that as fulfillment? You know? I want it. No. See, exactly. No. I guess I have a, like a different mindset than a lot of people because there's some people out there that would be happy just to collect their check and go home and watch some TV and then mm -hmm. cash out, mm -hmm. crack a couple beers and then call it a day. Yeah. Have a weekend with the boys and then right back to work. Here's Monday again. We hate Monday, don't we guys? Like, no, mm -hmm. I'm not, but yeah. I'm not of that mindset, you know? Yeah. And but I would argue, no, you, you continue your thought and then I'll No, that was mine. it. Go ahead. Are you sure? Yeah. 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 Okay. I would argue that, um, those type of people, like they're happy and they're content and they're comfortable, but I don't think they're fulfilled. Mm. Like I'd argue that there's, yeah. there's always still something, you yeah. know, they're always going to look to buy this new thing mm -hmm. or like they're looking forward to this. Like they're always looking for something to fill that hole with. Yeah. So I'd argue even them aren't fulfilled, even if yeah. they don't have the mindset to see it. Yeah. And I don't, they might be maybe happy, mm. but I don't even think you put happiness above everything. Yeah. I think, I think well, the way that I think about it, mm -hmm. and this is, subject to change <laughs> but i see happiness and joy as like two different things okay so like like if i'm happy like i'm really happy in that moment like i'm climbing with friends okay. or i'm seeing my family or i'm something like that or maybe i just had like, a, a really good week yeah okay. exactly yeah that's when i'm like i'm happy you yeah. know but like to have joy is is a totally different thing i think so it, it can kind of be this um I mean, uh, life is all ebbs and flows, all ups mm -hmm. and downs, you know, mm -hmm. but there are people, I don't know if you've met any, but I know I have, there are people who even in the lowest of lows still have this joy inside of them. Mm. And that, that is what I would argue is different between joy and happiness. Okay. I think happiness is fleeting, you know? So y I think you can have joy. Are you saying joy to you is more, I guess like potent or long term? Yes, exactly. I think, yeah, happiness comes from things. You know, okay. But joy is something you can build, build inside, you okay. know, and hold. Okay. I think. Yeah. Again, subject to change. That is. Yeah. That's just a thought that I have. Yeah, yeah, and I think that like, that might be, just really embodied in you. Mm -hmm. I personally like honestly can't picture that, but I think mm. my like equivalent is like, instead of joy, it's meaning. I think mm. you put meaning mm -hmm. above everything else. Hmm. Because. Yeah. Like, I have fun when we go out drinking mm -hmm. and a bunch of friends and then we're up till two and then the next morning it's a shit show. <laughs> like, that was fun. Yeah. But there's not a lot of meaning in that. Mm -hmm. But then instead, if I, like, woke up in that morning at six, read a bunch of pages, wrote about them, thought about them, and then maybe tried to teach them to somebody else, mm -hmm. that's a lot more meaningful, you mm. know? And yeah. that I would rather... Honestly, I'd rather have that second day than what I previously described. Yeah. Um, like man does not live on bread alone, you mm -hmm. know, like you need something more than just your belly full and a roof over you. You need to actually feel fulfilled, 100%. you know, and I think that's I think that like, I guess articulates within you maybe joy. Mm -hmm. Does that sound right? Yeah, I think I think you can Th is hmm. like when you use the word joy, is it more, I guess, meaningful to you than happiness? Well, like, joy is definitely more meaningful to me. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So I think we're speaking, like, we're... Um, we're on the same wave. We're saying the same thing, just, yeah. like, we have different words to define it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Our definitions are the same, maybe. Yeah. I would also say, like... Hmm. Okay, actually, I have no idea, but I'm just going to go off anyways. Go ahead. Hit it. I think sometimes, maybe, joy and meaning can kind of come hand in hand. Hmm. You know? Yeah. Like... And maybe, like, when you find your meeting, you'll find joy or something like that. But, like, I know, I know, uh, I can specifically think of one person. His name is Eric, back home in Utah. Kay. And he's had, like, 
like he um he helps orphans Mm -hmm. you know and uh, obviously everyone's um but he just that's where he finds fulfillment in life you Mm -hmm. know but he's not he's not a very joyful dude (laughs) Mm. like he's not content or happy or anything with his life even Mm. though like he's doing something that he really believes in and feels like this is what he was like meant to do like he loves it it's great but then like he still struggles with totally not you know what I'm trying like the, to get at? Is he still, like, negative all the time? Yeah. That's in all, his that's own life. Mm. Not outwardly, right? Like, he's a happy dude. <laughs> you see this guy, and he's like, ooh. Okay. You know? But so then his face really, is happy. Yeah, you get to know him, and he's not inside. Like, hurting inside? Yeah. Hmm. So I don't know if... and But, like, he also has found a lot of meaning in life. He's... So I, I don't know. I'm kind of going on a tangent. Yeah. So maybe maybe it is one definition and it is one thing. Yeah. They just coincide together. Yeah. I'd love to talk to him because he would know mm-hmm. more, you know, mm-hmm. about himself, <laughs> <True>. <laughs> which would Very be great. True. Um, yeah. That's interesting to me because I don't know. But like to me, I guess it feels always like a duty mm. more than like a like a joy. I think that's like we have similar definitions, but the words I guess we choose to kind of um, use his guidelines are mm-hmm. a little different. Yeah. Um, like, I don't know. I've. It feels like a duty to me to do these things. Interesting. Like it's a service. Interesting. It because. Yeah, like I guess. Hmm. I picture when we're talking about the two week stay to tie it back to that. Mm-hmm. Like I picture it as a duty to do your job in that two week span, and then it's also in the job script it's in your duty to leave Mm. as well Mm -hmm. and i think i think there's a lot of utility in setting that hard boundary as long as like we said you're not too rigid with it you know yeah but like you say i only have two weeks here so i got to give everything i got in two weeks Mm -hmm. because that's my duty and then in in that two weeks it's my duty to also leave so i can let these people that i'm working with Um, still yeah step up and do their own thing at the same time Mm. and let them fulfill their own duty because you're helping them fulfill their own passion whatever that is you know if the business is a restaurant or whatever and they must really enjoy cooking that food Mm. let them fulfill that duty of cooking things Mm -hmm. because it's also i guess it's like more of a abundance mentality as well Mm. where it's sufficient and you know that when you move on to the next piece, even though it's a new place, you know, there's a sense of like, um, faith that the yeah. next place will have, um, enough abundance for you mm-hmm. to get by. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So going back, you said the word for you is duty. Yeah. Um, what, what were you saying? That word is the same as, like you said, it's a similar definition, but we kind of use different words. I think like. Like, like you're using happiness and joy Mm -hmm. and I'm using more like, um, meaningfulness and duty, but I think we're like referencing the same things, things. but it just, we've tied different words to that, I guess. Yeah. I think, hmm. Yeah. Definitely like the same structure. Yeah. Just maybe dealing with different things. We're still working with helium, but our balloons are different colors. Okay. I see it. (laughs) I see it. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 Um, that's cool. I, I mean, I definitely agree. I mean, you can see it in all of humanity. Mm. The way meaning is the most important thing to yeah. everybody. Yeah. You can see it. You yeah. Know? It's like, like why do we build meaning? statues? Yeah. What's well, the point of what, that? What's the meaning of life? Why yeah. are we here? Like, you know? Yeah. That's always been. Yeah. From the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> that little that little goose has been sitting there the entire time he hasn't moved locations once i thought you were talking about the little kid when you said little that's the dad that's That's the dad dad. they're just hanging out still i think i think i saw him and his wife one time too oh that's so sweet (laughs) so sweet (laughs) he's so cute he's dancing he's so cute (laughs) oh oh nice i have them something yeah Yeah. so i stole this from somebody else i wish i remember their name to give them credit Mm. it was a different podcast oh but at the end 
the previous person that was on is going to pose a question to the next person. Ooh, so cool. Jonah didn't know it was you, but oh, he just and then he posed a question. had a Dang. question, and you're going to pose one to the next person. Oh, interesting. Whoever okay. I don't even know who it's going to okay. be. Yeah. But do you think about it? Like I'm putting this in your mind right now. Yeah, think yeah, about yeah. a question. Just anything, any question. anything, and it's going to go to a random person. The next one I interview. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So I get to yeah I get to answer it, Jonah's be, question. How how soft was your stool this morning? Like it could be as lighthearted I like or it. as serious as what you wanted. Yeah. <clears throat> this is Jonah's for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's not it's not long at I'm all. I'm excited. Uh, do you have a secret inkling on how you'll die? Yes, I do. <laughs> oh great! I really do. I am set. I'm gonna die by choking. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I know it for a fact. That is for not what I thought you were going to say. No, because I've already had to get the Heimlich four times in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it's just because I like, like food. Yes, because I eat and then people make me laugh. And you know that I laugh at literally everything. <laughs> and I don't know if it's going to be alone in my room one day where I'm watching something and I laugh and then I die. But I'm set. I think <laughs> it's, I really do think it's going to be that's such a sad way so to go you think out. it's death by food <laughs> choking on food choking on food or okay water one of those my head went straight to strangling no i was like <laughs> 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 yeah i'm part of the mafia a pot, <laughs> you're a mafia guy yeah. no i'm gonna eat something and i'm gonna choke on it <laughs> it's just how it's gonna go down frankly that's funny i don't have any idea you don't how i'm gonna die i feel like that's a good thing my, I'm just always i guess waiting. my best would be lame if not, I'm not going to die by being lame. Oh. It's going to be like, my goal is to like live as long as I can and have a sharp death. Oh, like, like yeah. if you see like longevity charts, what I'd like to get away from broad scale is this, um, like you hit 70s mm -hmm. and it's a slow decrease until you die. Mm. Because that means that whole time your quality of life is just decreasing. Right. And for if you, if you become a centenarian and you start decreasing from... 70 years old mm -hmm. that means that you had three decades of lower quality of life for, for the end of your life you know yeah. which if people want to live like that they should have the option but mm -hmm. at the same time if we could keep their body and mind healthy until let's say 90 and then they just then they died just in their sleep maybe or something like yeah. that that's my goal but and I think that you, should be more people's goals. I mean, goals. you can't control that, though. The best like you can, all. like proper nutrition, exercise. Uh, oh, so just like in old age, living well. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. As best you can I wanna, control. It's a good goal. I want to do 100 pull-ups when I'm 100. That's awesome. Well, <laughs> I yeah, don't know if that's what? possible. That's even. not possible. Maybe. 100 people. Have you seen people who are 100 years old? They're frail. There was even that 80-year-old uh, that deadlifted like 400 pounds. That's insane. Yeah, that's something really like cool. that. I mean, my favorite person in the entire world. Her name is Mary Goldring. Okay. She lives in Utah. She's, I think she's like 76. You look at her and you're like, oh, she's 50. Mm. Easily, like maybe younger. Because mm -hmm. she's just so lively and yeah. healthy. So I guess maybe it is possible. It's definitely possible. Especially okay. if you keep It'll your body like moving, Guinness, your mind moving. Guinness World Record. Yeah. Or just like, I want to live as healthy as I can and then mm -hmm. I'm done. That's, I agree And it with won't that. be like... I won't be moving like a 20 year old when I'm 80, but yeah. I'll still be able to move, hopefully lift some weights, mm -hmm. do some calisthenics, mm -hmm. eat a good meal and then go to bed early, you know, yeah. like that's the goal. But, um, to wrap this up, how about you, um, pose a question? A yeah. Uh, okay. I get to, I get to you, any question you any want. Question you can make it complex or simple or. Hmm. Um, okay. If you had to pick one superpower mm. to reflect oh. a natural gift that you have in this world, what would it be? So like, if okay. you're really, really good with people, say your superpower would be speaking every language or something. Okay. Or like, so you, you know, you see kind of thing like that. Like pick my, a superpower yeah. that has to tie to your tie best personality your, trait? Your, your best like ability your best gift. Ability? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So like my mom... I asked okay. her this question on the phone yesterday, which is why I was like, <laughs> oh, it's a good one. Yeah. Because um, we were talking about how she is a really, she's really gifted in like finding things and then like bringing the beauty out in them, mm. you know? She's mm. just really good, whether it's people or yeah. objects or whatever. So she, so I was like talking about superpowers and then just led into it. So there's my question. Does that make okay. sense? Yeah. 
I'm trying to phrase it better, I guess. It. Yeah, we I get need what to you're saying. Hone it into an actual question. I think it's more like, what skill do you have that would translate into your best superpower? Does yeah, that sound except better? I would flip it. What superpower would you name to your like best skill? You know, does that yeah. make sense? Well, I guess like, because any skill you have, like Peter Parker was normal before yeah. he got bit by the spider. Is what I'm picturing. Mm-hmm. But let's like let's say that spider. Like, the trait was there before the powers hit, yeah. is what I'm getting at. Okay, yeah. So that's why exactly. what skill do mm-hmm. you have now that if you got bit by that It would, spider, like, amplify. It amplified. Cool. That's yeah, where I'm that's perfect. From. Okay. Yeah. And, like, what would it what would it look like? Yeah. Okay. Good question. We're going to wrap up. 